Okay. Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis Texas size mega combo. This mega combo with the AM FM multiplex stereo, state of the art vacuum bulb infused, and the ultra precision. See, it says right there precision. I'm not being sarcastic. Par precision crafted professional equipment. Turntable by Gerard. Actually, this thing is so big, it's so long that when you pick it up, when two people pick it up, it like flexes and sags in the middle. Pretty impressive. Anyway, this thing is going to be used um, at a desert party, like a rave. And it might end up burning at the end. We'll see how it comes out. Uh, I really don't have room for anything Texas sized here in the Golden State. So here's what's got to happen with this. It's got to work. It's got to be able to entertain. So it's got to be have enough volume and enough bass to complement the music. So it's push-pull 6PQ5 outputs. It's got, I think, 12s and a bunch of tweeters. The tweeters are probably going to get changed out for some high-efficiency horn tweeters. And we need to get this working right. And the TV is going to get fixed. The CRT is necked. The chassis works. I already got the chassis going a long time ago. The chassis works. So I got a CRT for this. That CRT's got to come out and go in the trash. Um, through the fire to the limit. And that's what this thing's going to experience. This has averaged $6.4 million in annual sales. Take the 25K and run. Your own business. It's no express. Act now. Visit expressfranchising.com. Radio 790 KABC News, live local, live Lori Kelman. The man serving a life term in prison for assassinating Robert F. Kennedy back in 1968 has been hospitalized after being stabbed in San Diego last night. Sirhan Sirhan is 75. He's been in prison for over 50 years. Prison officials at the Donovan Correctional Facility say he was stabbed in the neck yesterday, now in stable condition. The guy who did it's been ID'd and has been put in isolation. And the latest on Hurricane Dorian is that it's changed course, now heading for the Carolinas instead of Florida. 790 KABC SoCal weather is sunshine but muggy all weekend. 80 in Torrance now, 76 in Santa Ana. Okay, let's get this out of here, and these are usually an uh, IQ puzzle to figure out how to disassemble, but the way this works is uh, not acceptable. What's our, our idle wattage is 94, let's see what it is on FM, 100 on FM, so 102, so FM uses 8 more watts than AM. So the VA is 115, which means it's got a pretty good power factor, 0.88, so that matters. So it's actually more like 115 watts. At least I think a generator uh, is loaded down by VA, volt amps, and not uh, real watts. So power factor does matter when you're running on a generator. So we've got a separate power supply. We've got, lo looks like a 12, 5 watts if that, and a couple 4 or 5 inch mid highs. So, 
we have to figure out how this all goes together. Okay, well here's what we got. Single-ended output, and this might not be hot enough. I, I really need something with a little, ooh, 1965. Uh, probably going to need something with a little bit hotter of an output than this. Um, yeah. Going to have to think about this. So, there's stereo demod right here. These. I wonder if this has any electrolytics in it. They're open. That's why it doesn't give us any um, output on multiplex and it has a bunch of those junk capacitors in it no wonder why it doesn't have any output wow they're actually Curtis Mathis branded too yeah oil yeah they're junk What's this little... Oh, that's a uh, 6AL5 dual diode. Wow, it uses a diode as the um, detector. Yeah, this is your stereo multiplex decoder circuit. Talk about an add-on. Yeah, we'll just stick that on there. It's Curtis Mathis. They'll pay an extra nine hundred dollars for it. Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. I thought it was because these are about five watts single-ended and about ten to twelve watts for two of them, depending on the B plus. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. So it's easy enough just to shorten the spring up a little bit and get the tuning. Uh, working again, that's pretty easy. Man, what a cheap ass build. Look at this. What a cheap ass. This Curtis Mathis stuff, this was the snake oil of the mid-century. Man, what a bunch of junk. This thing isn't even worth my good electronic spray. I'm just cleaning these pots with WD-40. This is some cheap stuff. I mean, these are all like the cheapest, lowest quality components are. Look at it. It's all couplets. The whole thing. Very few components. It's all just all couplets. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just all couplets. The only thing that's like discreet is this. Okay, this is a 6U8. 6AL5, 6AV5. And What's weird is it seems like it's working because the stereo pilot light works. So it's like there's just nothing getting through this board. Maybe these, I don't think these oil capacitors go open. I thought they short. Um, this might be one for the scope. Let's see if I could get a schematic on this. The other thing I want to do, if I use this for what the intended purpose was thought to be, I want to put a filament disconnect switch so only... Is there like a 12AX7 here somewhere? that drives these tubes. Maybe it's these up here, the pre-drivers, the AF amps. So 
basically disconnect everything except the audio tubes just like for an auxiliary input. The screen wire here is the filament 6.3 volts coming in and it comes from here and it was connected here and from there it goes up here and then it branches off to all the different tubes except the two 12AX7 uh, audio driver amp tubes. They get their own specific 12 volt source from the power transformer and they're connected to this balancing pot to null the hum. So if I just disconnect this, which I did, I cut it, that um, kills the, all the filaments of all the IF and RF tubes. And that also gives me about another 30 volts on the plate of the 6BQ5, so it should give me a little bit more power. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect a switch here. I'm gonna just drop it out the back. That way I can, when I wanna just use like a line input from a mixer, I can just drop all these filaments. It also cuts about 40 watts off the power draw. Well, I'm testing these capacitors. I got, this one's got about 100 volts on the other side of it and the leakage is like nothing. I mean, that's a 10 meg meter. There's, uh, it's nothing. There's like hardly any leakage and I checked, I lifted all of them and checked them. So I don't think the capacitors are the issue. Um, that, yeah, I could test that 6U8. I think that's basically the same as a 6GH8. This is a bit of a no-no, but I'm a, you know what I want to do? I want to put a, well, I want to put a line on this with a, let me see. I want to mark this thing so I can put them back. Okay, let's try this. I just don't understand why there's nothing getting through this thing. Yes, I did try uh, changing the tubes. Didn't do anything. I don't get it. All right, well, the, uh, the uh, tape input works pretty well and it's pretty loud. This thing's actually shaping up pretty nice. I've got all those filaments disconnected there. I haven't put a switch on it yet. But um, I'd like to get that multiplex decoder working just, it's a common problem with old stereo stuff. The multiplex stops working. I think it'd make a, a interesting video. I think we're going to have to get the schematic and do some actual diagnosis here. Looks like it's a 33E8MX is the model number of this thing. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, well there's no, th I couldn't find a 33E8 or 33E8MX. I found a 33C8 which kind of looks the same. Um, 33C8 MX, which is probably a standalone uh, console radio. So let's look at this. How does this work? Okay, so our audio comes in there and through the one microfarad there where it comes through to the uh, 6AV6 bandpass amp. So if it's coming off the plate, it would come up through that .0047 into the 6AL5 and then it would come through to our detector diodes. Well, does this, how does this? So 
So it has to be able to bypass through this thing. I mean, if there's no stereo carrier, it's got to be able to bypass through this thing. This is not an ideal way to look at a schematic. I'm sorry. You just have to, like, use your memory. So I wonder if I jump from right there, that one microfarad, over here to um, the output of this thing. You know, I see some diodes on this. Why am I not seeing the diodes here? I'm seeing two glass diodes right there. Here they are, that's the 19 kilohertz doubler. Yes, if I jump over that, uh, it goes to the directly to that channel. So the input's there, it's just not getting through this thing. Okay, see flag three there? That's the audio on flag three going in out of the one UF capacitor into that coil. Okay, see point C there on top of the 22K resistor? There is no audio. So is that coil supposed to filter off the audio? I don't think so. So if I jump over that coil, I get audio. Okay, I hear stereo separation with that bypass. And yes, that coil is open. So I believe what this coil is for is it's to filter off the 19 kilohertz and basically leave the 19 kilohertz on this side to go into the grid of the 6U8 there. So it does not allow the 19 kilohertz, it just allows below that it's like a low pass filter so it's just allowing everything below a certain I don't know 16 kilohertz or something to come through here so it's just allowing the audio to pass through this I'm not quite sure how that ties into the separation it must uh, it must feed back somehow or it's re-injecting it here in the center. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm not really an expert on how this works. I could diagnose it though and figure it out, which we just did. This coil is open right here. This 25 ohm coil L16 is open. I wonder which one that is. I wonder if it's worth trying to take it apart and fix it. Okay, I got the can off and I found the coil was broken and I was able to fix it, I believe. You can see the form is actually like loose here. And so I don't know if I can show my repair, but it's on the back side. Um, see right there, that little piece of wire I uh, added and then the little hair wire going up into the coil. So. Let's see if I could put some silicone around the bottom of this. And then I, I got a I got 188 ohms now, so I don't know where Sam's comes up with 25 unless there's still something wrong with this coil, which is very possible. With that coil repaired, quote unquote, for whatever that's worth, it's now measuring 186 ohms. Sam shows 25. I don't know where that comes from. It is working. Let's align it using the ST1000A. That's on left. That's right. It's pretty good. See if we can make it a little better. I'm going to start by turning the pot here. There's a definite point there where, where it... Uh... Okay, I'm going to start turning the coils. Okay, 
that seems about the best. Seems about the best. Ooh. Seems about the best. Now I'm turning the broken one. Okay, I need two hands to do this. Seems pretty good. It's working. Okay, I hear it working now. It's in stereo. Okay, what was wrong with this thing? Uh, two things really, dirty pots and that coil was open right there for the multiplex. So I added the um, tube filament disconnect for running, trying to save power on a portable low, uh, generation source, whether it ends up being solar or small generator. And I still don't know if it's got enough power to, um, uh, to entertain the crew. So we'll have to see if it'll keep the party pumping. But anyway, that's, uh, I'll do this as part one. This is the uh, tuner repair of the Curtis Mathis. Next, we'll get the TV working. I'm going to just put this all back together. There's nothing there that needs to be videoed. So it's working good. And uh, just an open coil. Jesus with those rounds we actually drove well on the freeway leaving the Rose Bowl or whatever <laughs> you know stereo was, indicator works we were anyone's advertised price of your mattress is free thinking about installing this guy here it has really loud high end That really wakes it up. 